Hi, I'm Zan van Ryan, and today I'm going to be reading from my brand new YA fantasy novel called By the Blood of Rowans, and this chapter is from Rowan's perspective. Fewer than two miles from Ross Taylor, Andy Kilduff dug his fingers into wet earth, his screams choked short by the silver blade severing skin and tendon, muscle and vein. Blood flooded his hands as he grappled at the rent in his flesh life pouring out of him in viscous ribbons to stain the churned ground beneath his feet. His attacker stood behind him, but when Andy tried to turn to face his murderer, their fingers knotted in his hair and dragged his head back, allowing more blood to fountain from the gash across his throat. The softest tinkling of bells accompanied his dying gurgles. I clutched at my own throat. Pain burned across my skin where the blade had cut the killed up. I gasped for breath as he did, the panic rising within me, an echo of his as I hurried away from Ash O'Donnell in search of a safe place to leave my body. There was no evading the summons to join a dying islander. The pain intensified, and I gritted my teeth against it. The world pulsed black and purple, the shadows curling their fingers around my ankles, sending skitters of ice across my skin. Finally, I let go as Andy sagged, a slow wilt of twitching limbs, and let his death wash through me, dragging me into the other world. Andy Kilduff appeared on the cliff top, hands still clutching at his throat. He hadn't seen his attacker. He thought he'd been alone on the meadow path, the same path he walked every afternoon. He'd taken a moment to catch his breath and observe a ring of flowers in the grass when hands had grabbed him from behind, a blade kissing his skin before he could react. He'd fallen face first into the mud at the foot of a lone hawthorn. All he knew of his murderer was the touch of their fingers in his hair and a scent like potpourri. Now, Andy crested the rise, his soul no longer weighed down by his arthritic body. I greeted him with a wave and perfunctory smile. No, not like this, Andy said. Some people fought the inevitable, but once they were on the clifftop, it was over. No adrenaline to the heart, no defibrillation or prayer could bring them back to life. This is the way. I said gently, even for you and your kind. Who? he asked, with tears on his face. I don't know. My family. You'll tell them, won't you? I'll make sure you're found, I said. Andy let his hands drop away from his throat. Wisps of starlight still seeped from the wound, silver droplets skittering across the swirling shadows. I don't want to die, he said. No one ever does.